So I decided to drop my distributor for Magic. I have two Pokemon distributors now. And I basically said, hey man, I do not want to do Magic. If you do not do ma if you do not give me Pokemon, I will go to this other distributor and I have a 90 day out to see how the relationship is. And the other distributor also didn't need me to have a physical store. So I was like, oh, okay. And they specialize in Pokemon, including Japanese Pokemon, which is very interesting. Uh, I typically don't like cards in other languages, but since I've been collecting Fire Emblem Cypher, it kind of makes sense. Why wouldn't I just collect Japanese cards as well from Pokemon? Magic the Gathering is a dumpster fire. Um, I know, you know, I would love to say, hey, Alpha Investments is wrong. Magic is going great, guys. Because I like to be a devil's advocate. You know, it's the lawyer in me. It's the type A personality in me. I like um, being a, how can I say? I like presenting the counter argument. I love being the underdog in the legal cases. And I think a lot of people who go to law school, they want to be the underdog, right? Again, for every OJ Simpson who has a lawyer, you have a prosecutor who has a lawyer. And it's a battle, only one person can win. Either OJ is going to jail for life or he's not, or he won't go to jail at all until he commits, commits other crimes associated with the murder, right? The, protect, the accused murder. And I would love to say magic is going well, everyone buy list everything you can get your hands on. <laughs> It's going awful, awful. You know, I had a talk with one of my friends. He owns a construction company and the game store is just like me. I own a marketing company. And game store is just kind of a nice hobby to have. And we're like, I was like, you know, he's, he's owned his game store for a long time, for probably 15, 20 years now. And he says like, this is the worst it's ever been for Magic. And he's lived through Dragon Maze. Dragon Maze was quite awful. It, Dragon Maze, the set, literally destroyed the cash flow of almost every local game store in Houston. Because if you carried Dragon Maze, you're going down to zero. It was like $20. It was the first fat pack, as we used to call them, that went to $20. I remember it being a big deal because I, I'd never seen a fat pack at $20 previous to that point in time. And that was while, that was like a few weeks after release, it went, it went to almost zero. It just wasn't anything good in the deck. Uh, Voice of Resurgence was it, and uh, they reprinted that several times later on. Uh, I used to buy, so the mistake I made was I bought, I buy collections, and I don't really care what the collection is. If you've ever sold me a collection, you know, throw it on the list, I'll buy it. And I'll probably give you a premium depending on the quality. So I look at your list, I look at, I think about, okay, do I really want this? If I want this, I'll offer you more for it than buy list. But at the same time, for the most part, even though I don't want it, I will honor the buy list and probably add free shipping to you. I bought a lot of magic cards that I personally had no interest in. I, and this is what, well, this is the difference, right? I didn't buy them because I was collecting them or I enjoyed them. I bought them because I thought they would go up in value. This turned to be out to be a very, very heinous mistake. And the money I spent on magic cards, even Fire Emblem Cypher, I spent probably $25,000, $35,000. In Yasha, I spent another twenty dollars to $30,000. Those games I'm okay with because I had a lot of fun. Pokemon probably spent over 50, 60, 80. It's hard to tell with Pokemon because I, again, a lot of that was back ended this year. So I actually haven't picked up my biggest purchase, which is 15,000 in uh, Japanese Pokemon cards. So I'm getting started on that venture. But I still spent more money on Magic from buy listing than everything else combined. As you may, may have known, I bought $27,000 of sealed boxes from a Rudy Patreon who was at the $100 tier. Uh, and those are the background when I live stream. I bought a, a a Power 9 collection. I bought uh, a separate Black Lotus with same guy sold me a Black Lotus, a Mishart's Workshop, a Ru Mox Ruby, a Mox Emerald, a Mox Jet. Yeah, I think that, that those are the ones. 
and I bought lots and lots of collections, lots of lion's eye diamonds, lots of blah, blah, blah. And I don't actually need any more of those. And I don't actually want any of those. And it might sound crazy, but the dual lands, I always felt was a very safe asset. It's not safe no more. And I don't even enjoy collecting them anymore. Like the dual lands, I've looked at them so many times throughout my life, right? Since I was a little kid, that they don't have any appeal to me. They're not textured, there's no autographs, there's nothing that makes them special and different for me. And they're not actually that rare. I can tell you there are cards in Fire Emblem Cypher that I rarely ever see. And when I see them on eBay, I just buy, buy, buy. And they're look better. Um, there are waifus, right? So like a land, uh, the land is the most boring card in Magic, I believe. Especially a dual land, which is just a combination of the two most boring cards in Magic, the basic lands. So it's kind of like, I realized, why am I buying all these things that I don't enjoy? Why am I carrying a product I don't believe in? You know, I can just buy on Amazon. You can buy a box on Amazon for 72 for a draft and uh, 80 for a set. Uh, always, always. Oh, it, it's not even like a special sale. It's just like random Friday night and they just throw the boxes on. Like why can't I just, you know, if I wanted to open some boxes for fun, maybe on the live stream, maybe get on a camera and video, just buy on Amazon and gets to me next day, I open it and it's a lot of fun. That's what I've been doing with Fire Emblem Cypher on Amazon and it has been a blast. So I haven't really enjoyed buy, I did not enjoy any of the purchases I made on Magic the Gathering in 2022. And the reason I didn't enjoy it was the majority of those purchases, 98% of them were made as an quote investment. And they all lost money. And in, in that, in terms of the negativity, yeah, I, I feel very, very sad that you know, A, I could have spent more money on Inuyasha or Fire Emblem Cypher or Pokemon. I only got started with Japanese Pokemon like next week after Christmas time, I'm supposed to get like, like just old sets, new sets, whatever, EV heroes. That's a popular set. <laughs> I'm gonna open a shit ton of those to get my Moonbrion in Japanese. I think Moonbrion's an EV, I'm pretty sure it's an EV heroes. And the odds are not bad. The odds, cause it's a tiny, tiny set. So the odds are way better than Evolving Skies or I call it Evolving Cries. So that's where I am. I think Magic moving forward, I, nobody can carry it as a store. I don't think uh, anyone can carry it as an investment, no matter what people think, and, and it's not fun. It's simply not fun to collect Magic cards. Outside of waifu chasing, which is what I do for Pokemon, where hey, there, there's a card I want. Her name is Wandering Emperor, the Japanese alt art. All right, let's open Neon Dynasty until we find her. That's a lot of fun. Uh, and the same thing I do with Pokemon. There's a Moonbrion, there's an Espeon, there's a shiny Charizard, you know. It's a lot of fun when you hit the card and it's a lot cheaper than gambling. It's a lot cheaper than going to the Indian casino I used to go to. And it's a lot cheaper than even having a night out, you know, to a nice restaurant. And I have a friend and he's been inviting me to Vegas so I can pay for his tab, obviously. And you know, when I last time went to Vegas, I went with my, um, this was like 2000, I, I went for like some type of conference. So they paid me to go, but the dinners, you know, the, I mean, $100 for a dinner for one person in Vegas is very cheap. You're looking at about $200, $300 a dinner a person. Because it, it, there are drinks that are $75 a drink in Vegas. Uh, so if I avoid doing that type of stuff and all I do is open some Neon Dynasty at home, I will theoretically save quite a bit of money from not going outside to the bar. And it's not really for me. You know, I know a lot of people enjoy that type of stuff. I always feel very awkward about it. I'm not, you know, antisocial. I just don't really like pretending I'm social. And it's just easier for me to hang out with my dogs and cats and just open a bunch of packs and it's fun. But am I going to open them as an investment? Am I going to keep them sealed? No, and no, and no. I can never keep stuff sealed anyway. Anyway, hi guys.